Hey guys, this is a pretty neat coin. I wanted to share it. It's a fantastic find. In no way am I gloating. I'm simply sharing it because I think it needs to be shared. And I'm hoping that uh, people that see this may have a similar coin and, and um, bring it you know, to the attention of the Spanish colonial numismatic uh, community. We'd really like to know if there's more of them. Uh, so as of right now, this is the only known specimen. This was recovered in Indonesia. I did the conservation on this coin myself. Um, it's Cartagena Mint, so it's a very challenging series, as is. The Cartagena Mint was a branch mint of the Bogota Mint, so, um, yeah, tough. And the Forreals are very tough. So there's something really unique about this particular coin, and I am going to explain that in just a second. So, But I wanted to first share the coin and share the reverse. We can see... Um, well, yeah, your typical Lions, Castles, Cross, Tressors. We have just a bit of Hispaniarum. And uh, we have just a bit of the legend here, too, where it says Rex. Nice little ornament. One six and a very flat three, which is almost impossible to see without a scope or a loop. It's so flat, in fact, that I'm just calling this a partial date. In fact, I'm not even counting that. But it is visible if you look very carefully. Um, maybe even if I tilt it, you might even be able to see what's left of it because it's been hammered there at the edge. So I'll put my finger right where it's at. It's just right after the point of this tresser here. It's right there. And it, it sticks up still just a tiny bit, but just not enough. But believe me, it is right there. I don't know if you can see that, what's left of that three. But to attribute this particular piece to the date 1630, it's actually not even needed because something more interesting is going on on the obverse of this coin. And that's what jumped out at me when I first saw this piece and really what makes this coin fantastic and special. And I'm so happy to have been able to study this particular piece. So as of right now, there is only one known, um, well, technically two now, but there was only one known for real, dated 1630 from the Cartagena Mint. That specimen shows R, N, E to the right of the shield and the denomination or value rendered as uh, four letter I's for in the Roman to the left of the shield. Now this particular piece shows a C, an E, an E. And I'm going to explain why that's really important on this particular coin. So Prior to 1630, and in the early years, uh, the early part of the year of 1630 itself, um, the Cartagena Mint was striking coins with the mint mark RN or NR, sometimes NER. Basically, there's, there's a number of varieties, and the mint mark was NR for Nouveau Rieno or uh, uh, New Grenada, which is Colombia. And that mint mark is, was changed in 1630. So for the sake of the video, I'm going to break it down into like a year's time. So let's say early 1630, the mint mark RN was still being used with the assayer's initial E under that to the right of the shield and clearly to the left of the shield as well. So now we know that there's two varieties of the four realities that bore that particular arrangement. And sometime mid-1630, the mint mark was changed to a single letter C for Cartagena. And then later in the year, it was just rendered as a C and then the assayer's initial E. But on this particular coin, what we have is we have the old mint mark underneath the new mint mark. And so what we're looking at here to the left of the shield is the new mint mark C for Cartagena over an N. I'm sorry, over the R. And then we have the assayer's mark E over the N, then we have the original assayer's mark E to the bottom. So basically what the die sinker did was when the change came and the new mint mark C was to be used on the new coinage, he simply took a pre-existing die set and stamped over the R with the letter C and then with nothing really else to use, he stamped over the N with an assayer's mark E. So the assayer's mark appears twice on this coin. But again, the, the third assayer's mark is, is uh, unaltered. It's exactly as it was on the original. But that letter C over the old mint mark 
is the first I've ever seen, and I think it might be as far as this particular denomination. Well, as, part, as far as this particular denomination, absolutely, it's the only known specimen. And we can attribute it to 1630 without the date because the change occurred in 1630. It's also of the correct style. The uh, lion castles on the reverse are correct. Um, it's just, it's very easily attributed to 1630. It's a, it's a really great find. Now, if it had the date, that would be even, it would be worth far more than what it is, not just monetarily, but... Um, as a piece to study and uh, share. Um, it's, a, it's a bit of a shame, but it, it's still a very important piece. So, um, pretty pretty beautiful coin. It was very uh, heavily, not heavily corroded, but very black with some corrosion on it. So I did the conservation, um, simple electrolysis. I didn't take it too far. I didn't want to ruin the coin anyway. I don't want to have a shiny coin. So I tried to do get it right where it would still have a lot of its original gray patina that was hidden underneath all that, which we can see here. And we can see a bit of corrosion still on the coin, but the coin, in my opinion, is a grade one, absolutely, uh, no doubt about it. And some of the small detail, like, I don't know if you can see this or not, is still visible, which is fantastic, but if you can see that line under the six, the one, the ornament, the X, the E, and even the R, there's this little line going around. And the way they would make these dies is they would punch a little center hole in the die for a compass you know like a compass you would draw a circle with and they would use that as their anchor point and they would take that take that compass and they'd go around and that compass left these little marks which we can see because these are really similar to um, the coins of Spain like the Spanish mints where the dots are on the outside and the legend is just right up next to the the tressors versus there being tressors, a series of dots, and then a legend. Uh, so we can see that little line there, which I love. And then we can even see where they had um, filed the die to remove rust and, and some of the um, burrs from stamping and some of the uh, halo. Uh, you probably don't understand what I mean by that, but um, doesn't matter. Anyway, interesting cut because it's it's very similar to like the later uh, Mexico Mint cuts where it's just the strap was poured out into a bar uh, or the silver was poured out into a bar strap rather and then it was divided and then in, and then cut so we have the natural edges here the virgin edges the rounded edges from as it was poured on on this side and then on the ends we have where it was trimmed so we have three cuts on each side which are very similar to that of Mexico as well little bit of silver here for that is um, that's kind of typical for this mint anyway um, sometimes people bark at me because I, I the way I handle these coins I'm not, I, you know, I'm not wearing gloves and I'm touching the surface of these coins but I want to remind you a that this coin was salvaged and B that this is a cob it's not a modern milled coinage with a nice proof of and there's clearly no luster on these coins. These coins never had like a, a mint luster. I mean, kind of, I guess, in a way, if you get one, if you're lucky enough to get one from like a hoard that's been untouched and uh, has that uh, kind of like almost blanched appearance from annealing and then striking, that's as close as it gets on, on cobs for a like a luster. Or a, and, and there's clearly no such thing as... Uh, a proof. There's also um, no such thing as a shield and grade that can be applied to a Spanish colonial cob because no two are the same. So when it comes to like, oh, I'm going to worry about it being an extremely fine or an MS state, this drives me nuts because the grading companies actually apply these grades to these coins and you can't apply those grades to these coins. It just doesn't work. Uh, it's a stupid thing that they do. And, um, you know, with before I go off too much on a rant about it, if you see me sharing a coin that is in a slab, it's because somebody wanted it in that slab and I'm just looking that coin over and, and correcting the mistakes that the grading companies made on those coins, which they often do and they often slab fakes.
So maybe I'm just saying it as a hint to some of these top tier grading companies, get a better consultant, um, one that actually knows the coins well and maybe stop grading these coins in the Sheldon grading standard. Um, and the reason I say grade one is simply because I do think the one thing that Mel Fisher did that was actually really smart was added uh, a very simple grading scale to salvaged coins. And this being at the top, uh, it's a grade one. There's no doubt about it. Anyway, that's it. Cartagena for Reals, 1630. If you have a coin that's similar to this in any denomination, I would really like to see it. And I would hope that you would contact me or leave a comment saying, I have a coin I'd like you to look at because it's very similar. Because we'd like to know if there's more of these out here. Right now, this is the only known specimen. If you have one in two real or one real or eight real, I really, really want to see it. And if you're wanting to share it to basically sell it and, and money is your concern, then then contact me if that'll if that'll help, uh, you know, pull it out of your collection and share it. Um, anyway, there will be a couple articles on this coin, a small one in the Spanish Colonial uh, Society newsletter, and then another one, I'm not sure where that's going to be published. Um, I won't get too much into that, but you'll learn more about it if you're part of the Spanish Colonial Numismatic Society um, or even just a, you know, member on the Facebook page. By the way, the Facebook page is private, so if you're searching for that, you're going to have to, uh, I guess you can find me on Facebook as a friend. I'm Ryan O'Shea, and that's O apostrophe S-H-E-A. Um, I guess you can find me, and if you're willing to share and contribute to the group, then I can, I can let you in that group. Uh... And then from there, you can find out about being a membership or getting a membership uh, to the newsletter and learning a lot more and uh, having all the up-to-date information because it's constantly changing and that's important. And this is an example of that. Now we know that there's a 1630 Borealis from the Cartagena Mint that has a over mint mark. Uh, I guess you could also say kind of an over assayer in a way because there's two assayers marks. And we also get to put it in there because now we know that it exists, period, and that there's two known specimens for 1630 versus one, and each one are completely different. Anyway, that's it. I'm going to wrap it up. I'm running on 12 minutes, so it's got to be boring a lot of people. Um, all right, guys, happy collecting. Um, if you have any coins that are Spanish Colonial, please do share them. I'd love to take a look at them.